This demo will show you how to set up and build a reduced order model, a ROM, with ANSYS Fluent and then how to export and view that model. We start with a Fluent model already solved. If we look into the parameter set, we can see four input parameters and two output parameters. Workbench is a parametric platform, so I could enter new parameter values over here, and for each design point, the input parameters will be adjusted and a new output value calculated. Let's go back to the Project tab and set Fluent up for ROM. I only have eight CPUs on my machine, so let's use four of them for Fluent. The model is a very simple heat exchanger configuration, just to make this demo quicker. But the principle has been used on much more complex models, including entire engine underhood assemblies, and been proven quite accurate. A quick review of the setup shows the parameter setup on the inlets and outlets. This is an inlet input parameter, and down here under Report Definitions, I've set up an outlet temperature. Check this box to create the output parameter, and defined it as the area weighted average of temperature on the outlet shell. OK. Also, if we look at models, we can see that the energy equation is on so that we can calculate heat transfer. But we also need to add a ROM model. In this version of the software, we need to add the ROM model to Fluent by manually typing a command in the window. Define models add-on 11. Add-on module, ROM loaded. And then you can see reduced order model under the models branch of the tree. Getting all the right fields and zones in place requires you to initialize the flow field before you set it up. So initialize. Then you can turn on the reduced order model, Enable. This dialog lets you select which variables you are tracking and over which zones. For instance, you could just track static pressure over one of the symmetry planes and static temperature at one of the walls. Optionally, we could select all the variables and all the zones and add to build a ROM of everything. But the more you select, the larger your files will be. And maybe we don't need our ROM to include all of this. Let's select and delete all these combinations. Instead, let's do static temperature everywhere and add velocity on all the zones except the walls. Everything on this list will be tracked in the snapshots. That's all you need in terms of ROM setup in Fluent. Hit OK and then exit Fluent. Now let's click on View to see the files associated with this project. There are no ROM files here yet, but if I update the solver now, and skip a little time, you can see a new snapshot file appears. This snapshot captures all the ROM outputs we requested for this design point, design point zero. There's also an associated ROM mesh file so that we can make our 3D plots later. Back on the project page, we can drag and drop the ROM builder onto the schematic. This system can automatically create the various design points and snapshots we will need, and then combine them to create the ROM for us. Like the other DX systems, it works by adjusting a parameter set and then driving a number of design point updates through this solver. So let's start by defining the properties for the design of experiments. The setup for this method is similar to other DX systems. You start by selecting your DOE method. For this demo, we will just use the defaults, including the optimal space filling design. The default number of samples is just eight times the number of inputs but you can change the samples type method or directly type in any number you want to get the resolution that you want. One critical step is that you need to define your ranges for each input parameter. These form the range of the design space that will be sampled by the design of experiments. And the ROM that you create will be able to instantly give you predictions for any inputs within the range that you set here. So let's adjust the inlet velocity on the outer shell to vary from 0.001 to 0.01. This temperature range looks fine with its plus or minus 10% default. Let's set the inlet velocity on the outer shell to vary between 0.001 and 0.005. And again, this default temperature range here seems fine also. If we preview the design points, we get a table like this. It shows all the input variations, and the lightning bolts simply mean that the output parameters have not been solved yet. When I hit the Update button, it will pass these design points to Fluent to be solved in batch. Let's show the progress. Depending on the size of your model, this could take some time and you might want to get a coffee or plan to run a big set overnight. But through the power of movie magic, I'm going to fast forward through this set of design point updates. The icons next to each snapshot bring up the status info. In this case, they're just saying that the fields on certain zones are not changing. Uh, for instance, temp on the inlet is constant. I guess this should have been expected and we could have saved some space by not selecting those field zone combinations for the ROM. But there are no real issues shown, so it's fine. 
While it continues to solve, we can take a look at the files view. And here we can see the snapshot files for each design point as they come in. These are like individual frames that the ROM builder will combine to build the ROM. They're added to the global ROM directory as the DOE runs. Since this model is prepared for a tutorial that we run during class sessions, it's fairly coarse and each design point only takes a couple minutes in real time. But still, we'll skip to the end here. Done. Now we have a full table of design points, each of which represents a unique combination of input parameters. And for each of these combinations, we have a ROM snapshot. The next step is to use the ROM builder to combine all these snapshots into a ROM. The ROM Builder tab includes the table of fields included in the ROM snapshots. And of course, these are the fields that we selected in Fluent. You can also see the input parameters. The range values were set in the previous step and can't be edited now or after you build the ROM. If you wanted or needed to add refinement points, you could do that here. Again, we'll just run this with the defaults. But you can see that it lets you choose which system's ROMs you're building, we only have one, and the number of modes. Use the Update button to build the ROM. This is a fast process, so I didn't need to speed it up for this video. For a really big model with lots of fields and zones, you might need to go get a coffee, but it is still much faster than an individual solve. The green check marks indicate that it is completed. The most important thing to look at at this point is the goodness of fit. This tells you how well the ROM will be able to predict the behavior of the model. Goodness of fit is calculated for each field, and the stars in this chart give you a good clue that this one fits well. This lower table shows how well each of the learning points, each snapshot, can be predicted by the rest of the response surface. L infinity norm error shows the worst possible error, or difference between the ROM prediction and the solver results, in any cell anywhere in that snapshot. So this worst case one can be as much as 15 degrees off, but most are less than 5 degrees off. These snapshots are really being compared with the ROM that they helped create. So to better assess the ROM's accuracy, we recommend creating completely independent verification points. Here, I'll just type one in, but you could have had these created automatically while the ROM was being built. Update and fast forward a couple minutes to get to the snapshot. The goodness of fit chart now includes a yellow column for each verification point. This new one would have been predicted fairly well by the ROM without any need to actually solve it. You can also look at relative L2 normalized error if you would prefer to see it that way. These are mostly within one-tenth of one percent error. You can also change it to a different field. The velocity seems to be even better predicted, with everything coming in at under 0.065% error. You can also look at the error within a certain region of interest. If this goodness of fit was not sufficient, we could create additional refinement points here, or go back to the DOE step and specify a larger number of samples for the solver. You can also manually add snapshots if you want to. Since this does actually look good enough for this course model demo, let's export the ROM. We support two different file types, a ROMZ file or an FMU, and you just need to give it a name. So we'll export it as a standard FMU file so it can be used in hundreds of different tools on the market. Check out fmi-standard.org for a full list of solvers and viewers that can use this standard. We also have our own 3D viewer, and you can open it through Workbench right here, or launch it standalone and then load in any ROMZ file you like. The basic UI includes some display controls, and you can rotate, pan, or zoom in on the model. For displaying the results, you can pick the region, such as the symmetry plane, and then the field, such as static temperature, and then click Evaluate to display the results. These sliders up here are to adjust the input parameters. Lower this inlet velocity, lower this inlet temperature, and evaluate to update the solution. Or raise this inlet temperature, evaluate again for instant gratification. You can adjust these sliders for any combination of inputs that was within the ranges that you ran. You can also change to any of the fields you included in the ROM. As you try different things, the combinations are stored up here as results, so you can jump back to them if you want. Future versions of this viewer will include more complete post-processing tools such as streamlines, ISO services, etc. This has been a demo tutorial of how to produce a 3D ROM using ANSYS Workbench and Fluent.